Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We want to thank you for joining us one more time on our Youth Sunday School Lesson International. Today, our lesson is simply going to talk about praising God for His greatness. Isn't God great? <laughs> yes. Well, let me introduce myself. I am Minister Coleman, and this is one of my youth students. Her name is John A. And to her, I am God Mommy. <laughs> so we are going to present our lesson today for our youth Sunday school. Our lesson is going to come out of the book of Psalm, Psalm 150. <laughs> so Psalm 150, and we're going to read the whole psalm. This is a very, very, very popular psalm, and there is nothing in it but instructions on how to praise God. We have a lot of reasons to praise God. He's a good God, isn't he? Not only is he a good God, but he is a great God. And if we think about some ways in which God is great, let us explore. Well, do you think he's excellent? Yes. Can we say he is marvelous? Absolutely. Wonderful? Yes. Mighty. Yes. Glorious. Yes. All right. Opulent. Yes. Whatever opulent means. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes God big, whatever it is. And God not only is big, but God loves a big praise. That's what we're going to learn about in our lesson today. So I am going to pray real quick. And we're going to get right into our lesson. We want to thank all of our youth, all of our moms and dads that instructs and leads and influence the youth to give God praise. That is the most important thing that you can ever teach a child to acknowledge God and to thank him and to praise him, to lift him up. So we do, we want to give our kudos to those parents who both love God, who re, uh, respect God, and they teach their children to respect God. Yeah? So I'm going to pray, and then we'll get right into reading our scripture and discussing a few key points out of our lesson for today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to praise your name. There are so many ways in which we can praise your name, God. We can praise your name by talking about you. We can praise your name by reading about you. We can praise your name by singing about you. We can praise your name by living as you have instructed us to live. And so many other ways in which we praise God, helping others. Uh, speaking well about others, having a smile on our face like our Mr. Man in back of us. His name is Zion. Well, we thank you, God, for everything that you continue to do in our life. You are such a good God to us, and this gives us our primary reason as to why we need to praise you. All people, everywhere, at all times, in some kind of way, shape, or form, we must praise so again, God, we thank you for this lesson and how it will remind us and teach us and instruct us on the praise that you desire from all of your people. Father God, again, we thank you and we praise your name in advance for all that we're going to learn today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen and amen. amen. So, if you have your Bible... Um, I'm going to be reading our lesson from the King James Version. And at some point, I'm going to have Miss Johnnie to do some reading for us today. I told her I was going to use her 
in the video today. She is a, a very bright student and she loves God and she likes to participate normally. She might be a little shy on the video today, but we pray that you would help her to feel welcome because with her being obedient and her being willing to sit here today, she is actually exhibiting praise to God. So we definitely want to encourage um, our students and our young people to never feel shy or afraid to do things in the church or within the church setting for God because he sees and it makes God so happy uh, to see young folks praising him and teaching others about him, okay? So let me read the lesson for today because <clears throat> I don't want to hold you long, um, but this lesson is so important. You know, we've been reading and talking about praising God in some way or for some reason over the last two months. And we've learned a lot. Um, I don't know if you have been tune, tuning in uh, to some of the previous uh, Sunday School lessons, even for the youth and or for the youth and their families. But if you get a chance, go back because it really helps to build you up. Um, and it gives you so many reasons and so much knowledge as to why praise should always be a part of your life. Praise unto God. We find a whole lot of other reasons to be excited and happy and overjoyed about things. But we want to make sure that we don't leave God out. He is the center of our happiness. He's the center of our joy. Isn't that right, Zion? Yeah, you see, he's already smiling. <laughs> yes, so God is worthy um, of our praise because it's in him um, and in the praise that he allows us to be able to live, to be able to move, to be able to have our being. So whatever we are today, it's because of him. And so because of that, we got to praise him. We just simply got to praise him. We can't leave him out, okay? So... Our lesson for today, let me go on ahead and read, and then I'm going to go back and I'll review the six verses that's a part of our lesson text today, and just talk a little bit about what's important in the lesson. So our reading goes as follows. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. We say he was great, right? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. We talked about now all the instruments. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything, let every, every, everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. 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 All right, so that is our lesson. Well, let's go on back. We're going to recap and go back to verse 1. Let's talk about verse 1, where it says, Praise ye the Lord. How many lords is there? One. One. It's only one that matters. All right? There may be other people that are calling themselves God other people that are calling themselves Lord, but there is only one Lord God, and he is the living and the true Lord God. Amen. Amen. It says, praise God in his sanctuary. What is his sanctuary? His sanctuary is that secret place. It is that personal space that you 
communicate and commune, pray, sing, think about, um, lift your hands unto God. That is the sanctuary. Um, it is not always the church because is the church always open for worship? Mm -hmm. Is it always open for worship? Not all the time. Especially now in the COVID days, right? There are many churches that are still closed. And if we were relying on churches to be open to praise God, wouldn't, wouldn't he come up short? So we can praise God anywhere. We can praise God everywhere. Okay, what do I mean by everywhere? Let me give you some examples, okay? If you was out on a boat in the middle of the ocean, let's say you took a cruise, you can praise God there. If you are on the basketball court and you're sitting on the bleachers waiting for your turn to get on or get in the game, you can praise God there. If you're in the bathroom, and while you're washing your face in the morning, brushing your teeth, you can be thinking about God and praising God there. When you are taking your exam in school and you don't know whether or not you're going to pass, you don't even know if you have the knowledge that it takes to pass, you can praise God there with your trust in him. God, I'm praying that you would help me with my test and help me to pass. The mere fact that you are acknowledging God, that he can do something for you, that you are expecting him to do something for you, that you desire for him to do something for you, and you talking to him and nobody else, that's praising him. Did you know that? See? So, this is what God wants. God wants the attention of the people who know him. Okay? The people who love him, he desires our, our attention. We give our attention to so many other things that is not deserving of it. But God wants us to refocus our attention, our praise, our respect to him and all that he has done and all that he stands for in our lives, right? Then the scripture in verse 1 goes on, and it finalizes saying, Praise him in the firmament of his power. And you might be saying, what is firmament? Well, we heard that word firmament back in Genesis when God was creating the world. Well, the word firmament is like dividing. It is like division. And the firmament of his power just simply means Praise him for his power and his strength that he has both in heaven where he lives and on earth where he can circulate around the earth. You know he's a spirit, so he can go anywhere around the earth. But his dome, his home, his throne, they all run, Woo is in heaven, right? So God's might and his power and his strength is both in heaven and it is also in earth. And so we must praise him for that because who else has power all around the place? Nobody. Right? Okay, verse 2. Praise him for his mighty acts. There it is again. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Not just greatness, but his greatness is excellent. If you hear the word excellent, that's just like the ultimate. It's like no failure, no error, no, it doesn't come up short, right? So this is what God's greatness is in our lives. He is great. He's the best. He's the bomb. Give me the elbow on that. <laughs> That's praise, right? <laughs> you elbow somebody. That's praise, right? All right. Verse 3. Praise God with the sound of the trumpet. Can you make a trumpet sound? What kind of trumpet you got? 
<laughs> that trumpet is like mean. That trumpet makes a mean sound. And they used to use this trumpet when they used to go to war. The people, the guys that was in the front line, a lot of times they used to have musicians that would lead the soldiers in the war. And they would have all their instruments and big old loud sounding instruments. Sometimes the noise from the instruments alone used to scare off the enemy, the other people they was going to fight. <laughs> That's just how powerful the music was. But they used to get there. Ooh, oh, mm, I, I probably can't even make it. Ooh, I'm not going to even try, God. <laughs> God, I'm not going to try. All right. But anyway, this trumpet makes a mean sound, okay? All right, so with the horn, and it just used to give such a powerful, loud sound. And so even when Jesus cracks the sky, when he really comes back to earth to get us, all of the people that love him, that have served him, the people that died that's in the grave, and, and I mean, they've been buried for a long time. But guess what? Even they are going to hear the sound of this trumpet. And when they do, they're going to come up out of the grave. That's just, huh? how, that's just how loud it is. Really? Yes. Yes. So, God wants everybody that got a trumpet or access to a trumpet, especially you band players, to blow that trumpet with God on your mind, praising him. Then it says, praise him with the psaltery and harp and those are like your string instruments can you name one string instrument for me a harp a harp what about a ukulele mm -hmm. or a guitar a guitar <laughs> what about a violin a violin <laughs> so pull them all out because God made them to give him praise, right? I know we use it for all sorts of other things, for bands, concerts, uh, people singing, uh, uh, musical uh, symphonies and things like that. But those instruments were created with God in mind, okay? And first and foremost, he should get the use and the praise out of them, okay? So then verse 4 says, Praise him with the timbrel and dance. The timbrel is like your tambourine. We had a tambourine. This is like a baby tambourine. But we got, remember those tambourines we have at church? The round ones with those little things, the little, little cymbal things on there. And we love them, right? We can make drum beats. So we just make a joyful noise with them all the time, right? The children love the tambourines. Guess what? When you were young, we got you a tambourine. When you were a baby, yeah. So they have little small tambourines where you can teach your child from a baby. I mean, from one year old. Or maybe younger. You know why? Because even children have the spirit of God. They love to hear sounds. So whether you, you know how children are drawn to the piano, right? They are drawn to the, <laughs> don't they go running over there to the drums? So even children want to pray. So when they do that, and I know we have to have order in the church, but it's a great thing that they even just want to play instruments. Encourage them to do that. But more so, teach them how to do that when they go to church so that they can understand and make the connection of their praise and their likes for instruments to doing it for God and doing it in the church, okay? That's a great thing. So this is a, she's musically talented as well. And she learned, she observed, <clears throat> she had that influence, and it's working. So, we thank God for you. But the scripture says, then praise him with dance. Now, what you know about, what you know about dance? She's a liturgical dancer too, right? So, this is how, again, we can praise God. 
don't ever stop dancing for him. He loves for us to dance. If we can dance for anybody else, then first we need to be dancing for him. If we can clap our hands and say yay for anybody else, we need to be doing it for him first. Yeah? If we can skip, if we can jump up and down, if we can kick our legs, if we can wave our hand in the air, right? If we can, oh, yay, yeah, we can do it for God. We should do it for God. Hey, our scripture says we must praise him. Praise the Lord. So that praise belongs to God first, right? And then we can do our thing, okay? Or, or do what we got to do for other people. But keeping God first, that's one of the key things we want you to take away from this lesson. The praise belongs to God. So let's move on. Then it talks about in verse 5, praise him upon loud cymbals. Praise him upon high sounding cymbals. Now, God don't just want high cymbals. He wants high sounding cymbals. So that tells me, does God like a lot of noise? Apparently, right? Yeah. He likes instruments. So, yes, he likes instruments. He likes band. He likes party praise. Right? He likes party praise. It's like, he, like don't be all shy and sitting there with your Bible in your hand and you all stiff and you can't clap. You don't want to say nothing. You get mad at the people that do try to praise him. No, he don't want us to be like that. He wants us to give him praise. He said, whatever you got, instruments, guitars, piano, drums, mics, sing, your voice, clap your hands, stomp your feet, wave something in the air, even with your robes. If you got the right thing on, you can cause your clothes to, to, to start giving up a praise, right? <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Young kids don't wear it down on them by robes, right? <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Getting the point here. He wants loud stuff. He don't want you to stay quiet. No. And our last verse, it comes right on back full circle. Let everything that hath breath. Is he just talking about breath in the lungs of a human? No. Because tell me what else can live, have life. Animals. Animals. They got life. They live and they die. But they have breath in their lungs. They're only able to breathe because of the air God has provided on this earth for them to breathe. Right? That can be taken away. If it's taken away, will it be able to do anything? Mm -mm. What else has life? Plants. Plants. The plants are standing tall. Going back and forth, blooming, looking lively, looking green. Or if you got fruit, fruit bearing off of it, all of those things is praising God because they are serving their purpose. One way that we praise God is by serving our purpose. Whatever he has called us to do, do it. And do it well, right? Yeah. Give me another one. And did you know... That like when plants move yeah. and they bloom and the leaves fall off and they get back on and they change different colors, uh -huh. they're praising God. Let me add something to that because I like that. Guess what? We just read in Psalm 149 and I believe that first or the second verse, it talks about singing a new song unto the Lord. And guess kind of like this, would you tell me about these leaves as they fall off and then they rebloom. And before they fall off, they have beautiful colors, all kinds of beautiful colors. That's almost like singing unto God a new song. Because the newness, it falls off, but it's so vibrant and beautiful before it does. But then they all come back. And when they come back, after falling off, they coming back with a new leaf. Right? It's new. new. 
Yes. And then they're going to start all over again. Full trees, waving as branches. The leaves looking beautiful. Some leaves you can even eat as veggies. But, uh -oh, you don't want to eat them. I don't know about that. Anyway, well, anyway, God gives us breath. And with that breath, he wants something in return. What does he want? Praise. Praise close. And the last part of our sixth verse says, Praise ye the who? Lord. But I don't want to praise him all the time. I think other people should get our praise. I think I should get something out of that. What's up with that? When we giving other things our praise, you think God like that? No. Why do you think he don't like that? Because the Bible tells us that God is a what kind of God? Is a jealous God. God, do that. God is a jealous God? Seriously? Mm -hmm. Well, she right. Yes, when we are given other things, better praise than we're giving to God, he jealous, he don't like it. And I tell you what, you get ready to get that other thing in trouble. Because if God got to remove that thing out of your life so that he can get your fo focus attention back on him and giving him praise, he'll do it. If he loves you, he'll do it, okay? So it's disobedience to give our best praise to something else on this earth. I don't care if it's a sports team. I don't care if it's your money. I don't care if it's your car. I don't care if it's your girl or your guy. I don't care if it is your career. I don't care if it is your body trying to make you look good. If you're giving praise, if you're giving attention, if you're giving glory or honor or adoration, it just looks so... If you're giving any of that, to anybody else or anything else greater than what you're giving it to God, then you're out of order. You got to get that in order. You got to check that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we got some work to do on that, right? Okay, so, but this takes care of our lesson and explaining our text. This was a great lesson. All it's just telling us is that there are, first of all, so many different ways in which we can praise God that God considers it praise unto him. Give me a few things again as we wrap up. What ways in which we can be deemed as praising God when we do what such things? We can sing. We can sing. Use our voices. We can dance. We can dance. Dance right. Don't dance provocative. No crazy dancing. But dancing in an honorary way, okay? As though God was sitting right before you. You're not going to do seductive dancing in front of him, okay? So let's keep it right, people. Keep it right. What else can we do? We can play instruments. We can play instruments, and there are so many instruments. I don't care if you at your school desk and there's no instruments there. You can be beating on the table or beating on your legs. Okay? You can have just a beat in your head. Ain't nobody got to hear nothing. You could just be praising God in silence, right? And thinking about him. Thinking about his goodness, right? Give me another way. This. Right. You can read the Bible. You can read the Bible. She's right. One of the best ways to show him you honor what he has wrote in this Bible is to read it. You read and everything else, right? Read that book, right? Give me one more way. We can go to church. Ow! She dropped it. She dropped it, y'all. She dropped it like it's hot. Now, I ain't telling her to say that, but she telling you like it to you I is, right? Go to church. Yeah, in that place, you can find your own space and you can praise God. 
You can lift your hands amongst other people who feel the same way that you do. You can't do that at school now because they're expecting you to focus on your work, right? You can't even do it when you go to work, right? You look crazy if you're out in the marketplace in the stores and Walmart and you try to drop your praise there, right? They might come and send security for you. But you can do it in the designated place that God has made for us, his church, okay? Or in some instances, they call it his tabernacle, okay? The four walls of the building that's been set aside just for people to come and worship, praise, and learn about him in the church. So go to church. And what do we do when we're at church? Did you already say pray? Yeah. Pray. We got to pray. And if we can lift up a pray, a praise anywhere, right? Anywhere, on the subway, whatever. You can pray anywhere. Should I say it? You sitting on the toilet? You can be praying, right? <laughs> All I mean, <laughs> let us I mean, move on. It might sound weird, but it's the truth. It's the truth. That's a, a quiet place. Nobody's there disturbing you. Okay, we'll get off of that. <laughs> Woo! We're going to wrap this up. I'm going to have John A. to close us out with a good word. This is your word. All right? She's going to read that, and then we're going to close out and let you go. We thank you so much for joining us, and we pray you've gotten something out of this lesson text of the 150th Psalm. And we pray that you will apply it. All right? And always keep your focus on God and always strive to give him praise, okay? He is so worthy. He is great and greatly to be praised. All right? So this is a choice scripture she wanted to read for you and let you take it away, okay? Go wrong with it. This is your word. Listen in. So this is called the goodness of God. Seek your happiness in the Lord, mm. and he will give you your heart's desire. Give yourself to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will help you. He will make your righteousness shine like the noonday sun. Yes. And I have just read mm. Psalm, the 37th chapter, 4 through 6 verse. All right. Well, that says it. So, we're going to leave that word with you, and we thank Ms. John A. for joining us today, and we hope to see you again, and thank you, Mr. Zion, for always keeping a smile on, on your face. face. That's praise, y'all. That's well, how I got it. <laughs> yep, keep the smile on your face. Don't let nothing in life get you down and take your smile away and your joy that is within so again, we love you. We thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again in another two weeks. We're meeting again on a two-week basis for our youth. All right? Next week is Sunday School International for our adult class or anyone that wants to watch. I'm Minister Coleman. I'm John A. Coleman. And we'll see you later. Have a blessed day.